your faithful host, The Mole. It's the first degree, the DE episode. We also have special guests, Volume 10 and Cool Keith. Let's get fucking weird. All right, it's time for some music reviews, and we got celebrity special guest, Volume 10, who's going to (laughs) weigh in on this. I'm a celebrity, huh? (laughs) Okay. Esteemed celebrity guest. Esteemed celebrity. (laughs) I appreciate it. Legend. Okay, I can go with that one, too. First off, I wanted to talk about Quelle Chris. He has a new album, Death Fame. We actually half listened to this album when I was cooking, and then... We listened to uh, a little bit of his interview in the car the other day. Okay. But this is the title track. Was this the guy that you interviewed a couple of day, uh, days ago? No, I've not interviewed this guy. I would like to. If anyone's out there, I'd like to interview Quelle. Um, But this is the title track off his new album. Um, we're going to get Volume 10's reaction to it. Let's go. 21 guns when the sun retires. Sunshine, skin burning like pot water. Living with regrets, you can't fart harder. That's past kids. Trying to act like we ain't doing it the best, though. Drop more on them harder than blood soul. You gonna have to kill me twice. That's on grand names. Fuck getting rich and dying. Try and give me death. Thing. I got a question. Do we hear an MF Doom uh, influence? Well, MF Doom has influenced so many people, I wouldn't be surprised that that would be the case here. Does it sound like it to you, maybe? That doesn't immediately strike me, but now that you mention it, sure, I could hear that. Yeah. yeah. I think there may be, uh, and why not MF Doom? He is one of the greats. Um, I I like it. Um, I like him. Um I like the lyrics. He's he he doesn't seem to have anything missing. I like the lyrics. I like the beat. I like the hook. And uh, you know, for I like his voice. You know. Yeah. And uh, you know, I've never been a fan of the guys who rap straight across the line. You know, and don't. Yeah. Their voice doesn't fluctuate out very far, or you know, there's no fluctuation in their delivery but this guy brings brings it you know what i mean to where that that even tone all the way across is not bothering me usually i want to scream at guys that just go all the way across but but he's good he's really good I I I I I think I think if, if the rest of his album sounds like this or the rest the rest of his material is as good as this, I think I'm a fan. Cool. Yeah, I'm a, I've been following Quelly Chris for a little while now. Um and I'm always excited to check for what he comes out with and this is probably my um favorite. I I would say this is my favorite of his work. Favorite song or favorite album? This album. Probably a lot of people listening already know who he is, but yeah, Quali Chris, he comes from uh, Detroit originally, spent a lot of time in Chicago, and then I think now he's in New York, but uh, definitely one of the best, I would say. I haven't heard of him before today or before yesterday when I heard him interview, uh, but he's definitely someone I'm going to remember. Quali Chris. Quelle Chris, yeah. Quelle Chris. And I like his honesty. Like, we were already, we were talking about Kendrick already and just how, like, um, kind of bravely honest he seems on this new album. And that's another thing I like about Quelle Chris. He seems like he's uh, willing to bear bear his soul, not in a cheesy way. Um, Yeah, dope material. All right, so let's move on. This is another one we kind of casually listened to the other day. This is from the Fat Lip and Blue album. And, of course, Volume 10 here has done a track with Blue and knows Fat Lip pretty well. So there's a connection there. But this is probably the track that grabbed me the most on Casual Listen of their album. Uh, It's called Live from the End of the World, Volume 1 Demos. Apparently this is recorded over, like, seven years and i think it's more like a just like a collection of 
tracks that they made rather than like a proper album. But uh, let's check out this track. Well, I want to say before we do that, go check out Caked Up uh, by Jupiter, which is the song that uh, Blue and I uh, is on. Blue and I did a song with Jupiter. It's pretty dope. Go look it up. Caked Up. Yeah, Self Jupiter, Blue, and Volume 10. Oh yeah, one of the dopest songs I've heard in a long time. I heard him say it, they say nobody would play it Tell that to Dre, Jimmy, Iveen, and Clive David Don't hate it, freedom of speech is violated Politics and rap music is not related Don't ask me shit cause I'ma plead the fifth And I'ma hit this split and sip this fifth very nostalgic hits you in that nostalgia bone i'd say yeah i mean uh i did think 1993 when i heard it i was like that's the type of vibe that it was on um but that's not a bad thing you know what i mean i mean nowadays when you say nostalgic you're actually saying uh back to the dopest part of hip-hop you know what i mean that that golden age um you know, Fat Lip did the ver uh, the hook on the first after the first verse, and then Blue did the hook again. Uh, when I first heard the song, I thought that the hook was long. I don't know if you remember me saying, yeah. "I don't know." Something about the hook was really long, yeah. and I still think it was long, but not too long on the second listen. And there are no rules in hip hop, you know what I'm saying? So on second thought, I was, you know. Hey, that's just hip hop, and and now now I think Blue repeating the hook after Fat Lip was actually dope. You know, when I didn't really think it was at first. Yeah, uh, I think it was really dope. Um, I, I can really appreciate the uh, the the uh, lyrics from Blue and also from Fat Lip. I, I, you know, I haven't really heard a lot of blue stuff, but uh, he's impressing me. And uh, I mean, overall, I think it was a really good song. I hope he didn't pick all the good songs. Like, I'm not going to be able to shit on any of these songs. <laughs> well, you picked all the best ones, didn't you? We'll see. I mean, I haven't listened to any of these albums really thoroughly enough to really have properly absorbed the albums and this is a case in point where i i definitely want to check the album some more but from what i've gathered so far i really like it but yeah just about this song i agree with you that hook it's it's funny because like when you mentioned it the first time i was like yeah that's a little too repetitive on repeating the fucking hook for like a minute straight or whatever but um oddly enough one thing that makes this song weird is like it it works anyway right it does work <laughs> it does it's very simplistic um, but it's one of those cases where I just like it anyway. Oh yeah. And by the way, go catch, uh, fat lip and otherwise volume 10. It's my song featuring fat lip and otherwise. And, uh, it's called moon rocks. Go check that out. There's a, there's a video with it. It's pretty dope. Yeah. It's a great video too. Thanks. All right. So the next song is. Chief and the Doomsday Device from it's the title track from his new album, which I happened to produce. Um, I made all the beats on this album. It came out a, about a week or two ago on Fake Four, and I don't think Volume Ten has heard this before. No, so. so if I don't like the beat, I get to say I don't like it. Yeah, man. <laughs> if you don't like it, you gotta all be right. honest. All right, let's check it out. Second guess, it will be a blessing. Flux popular is the science. Upgrade straight to the system. Kill them with the opposite of science. Second guess, it will be a blessing. Flux popular is the science. Numerous tactics that are actions will enact to impact our social transactions from the natural expansions that occur. Keeping clarity is minimal within the blood. Talking points to those anointed to deliver. 
bigger hands front and like they got it all figured out when the class they brandish my vanish so And the verdict is Oh, I like the beat. <laughs> so I got a question. Yeah. <sighs> It sounded like his vocals were a little distorted. Was that purposely done that way? Yes, they were, and that was purposeful. Okay, then it then it was dope. <laughs> um, I'm I don't know about that part though. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? Um, it seemed like it messed with your mix. I was thinking like, oh, this is not mixed right. You know what I'm saying? But then. When he stopped rapping, I can hear the clarity of the music. And I was like, oh, it is mixed correctly. It's just that part. or It's just the microphone, mm-hmm. the way you did that. Um, I'm not sure I'm in love with that part of it. But overall, I like the song. I think it's pretty dope. It's pretty hip hop. What year? Like that beat also sounds nostalgic to me. What year do you think that beat should have been dropped in? I mean, I think what you're hearing probably is that I used the uh, cowbells from right. like the uh, Roland, you know, drum right. machine from the 80s. The 80s, okay. Um, yeah. <laughs> so yeah, it sounded like that. It sounded it's got like elements that. of the 80s for sure, but I hope that it's, you know, I hope that it's futuristic at the same time. It was, I think it was. It sounded It sounded old and, old and new. It did sound like something that I would hear today. You know what I mean? I respect the song, man. Um, what I, I want to ask you, because I was uncertain. Wait, I want to say that I don't want to hope your homeboy doesn't get mad, but nah. I like his... I like what he did, yeah. but I think I like the beat better. All right. Yeah. Um, I was curious what you thought about the buzz. There's this loud buzz in the background for a lot of it. Um, I didn't really notice it. It's like, bzzz. I didn't really like notice it because I was trying to listen to what he was saying behind the, the distortion. Right. Well, the fear was that that buzz was overpowering and too loud. So I guess I don't it think wasn't. It was. uh, but overall, it's a good song. Cool. And there will be links to this and all the uh, stuff we're discussing in the show notes. Next up, let's talk about the new Kendrick Lamar album. Now, I know every journalist in the world is talking about it already, so we're not going to dwell on it more First than we need all, to. First of all, I want to say this. Let me interrupt and interject something. I don't like stuffy-ass white dudes that can't rap critiquing our fucking music. I don't <laughs> like it. And who is that? What's that guy that, that you saw me... When I said it, he made me feel that. Do you know who his name yes, is? Yes, yes. Uh, that's Andy. Yeah, those kind of guys, right? I don't, I'm not I'm not really feeling it. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, to be honest, man, when I first heard you critique my stuff, it was a, it was a good, cri- cri- you know, critique. And, you know, I'm not mad at it. But, you know, I didn't really know you. I didn't know you at all. And I'm thinking, who's this little nerdy-ass white dude who thinks he could just come into the hip-hop realm, be weird rap, and think he's going to fucking be telling people what's going on? You know, here's another one. But I want the fan base to know that Jonah, or the mole, is not one of those guys. This fool is an MC. This dude is dope as hell. I heard some of his material, and I'm a fan of the dude. Uh, So for everybody out there who thought uh, the mole was just a stuffy, nerdy white dude who didn't, who wasn't part of the culture and all of that crap. I'm here to tell you, Volume Ten knows that not to be true. This is a hip hopper right here. This dude has skills, and he's very uh, humble. And maybe that's why I didn't know that he was as dope of an MC as he is because he wasn't dropping his stuff to weird rap. And I've been, you know, lately I've been telling them the last couple of days after hearing this stuff, like, hey, man, you need to drop some more of your stuff to weird rap. You know, we need to know how dope of an MC you are. You know what I mean? So props to the mole and he's the real deal. All right. That was perfect, man. I'll I'll Venmo you that 800 bucks (laughs) right right now. (laughs) All right, though. uh, Yeah, so what's interesting, I think, about this Kendrick album is you didn't want to let me play it at first. I was trying to play it a few days ago, and you're like, shut that shit off, man. I don't want to hear that right now. So can you talk about... Are you my fucking chops, nigga, talking about Kendrick? I can edit this out if you don't want it, but... 
I thought it might be interesting. Like, why were you hesitant? Um, I guess I was a little bit hesitant because I'm from the good life. And the good life hated niggas that were rich and had record deals. <laughs> I hated those dudes until I became, well, I wasn't rich, but I had money and I had a record deal. And then it was like, they all started fucking treating me the same way. Not uh, not everyone, but a lot of people. And I guess it was, to be honest, it was like halfway on some hater shit. Like, ah, oh, man, I got to hear fucking Kendrick again. You know what I mean? Everybody, Kendrick, he got the new album. Like, you know what I'm saying? Everywhere I'm looking, Kendrick here, Kendrick, hey, I love it. You know, and it just got to the point where I was like, ugh. It, you know what? It's It makes me, like, every time there's a trend on social media and I have to see somebody too much, I get that irritated type fucking feeling. Yeah. You know what I mean? So that's all it was. It wasn't nothing towards Kendrick. I'm a fan. You know what I mean? And also, uh, I believe he's a fan of the Good Life Project Blow. I think he may be yeah. a student, you know? And... You know, I, 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 I was there. That was all. I was just like, oh, I've seen him all fucking day to day. Now you're going to play. <laughs> you know, you went groupie like everybody else on social media. You know what I mean? Like, good, oh, good, Kendrick, Kendrick. So that's all it was, man. It was like, oh, I've seen enough of Kendrick today, bro. And then, like, I didn't realize today he was going to actually listen to the whole album. But I was like, well, you got to at least hear this one track. And like, I was going to play this track, uh, We Cry Together, featuring Taylor Page which is a crazy song. Like just listening to the album, like the first time through, that was one of the tracks that really immediately kind of grabbed my attention. I think I know which song this is, so we don't have to listen to it right now. Yeah, it's the the fighting song. Oh, the fighting song. Okay, so you want me to talk about that song right now? Yeah. So I like that song. Uh, It's definitely one of the ones that stick out. You know what I mean? I think there's probably four or five of them that stick out to me. Um, I like his soft stuff, you know, his more R&B sounding stuff, but I don't like it as much as I like his hardcore rapping. But, I mean, maybe those songs are just not for me. You know what I'm saying? Um, Yeah, I'm right with you. You know what I'm saying? I think maybe, uh, you know, unfortunately, I feel like a lot of times MCs forget about the females, you know what I mean? And we are just talk, you know, we talk holding our nuts. And I don't think at this point in my career, I realize that that's probably a mistake. Um, not having songs for the women to vibe with uh, is a mistake. They're over 50 percent of the fucking population. And then we're not going to rap to them uh, it's 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 not cool. So I think maybe some of the softer stuff was was geared towards the women, and I'm not gonna be mad at that. You know what I'm saying? Um, it was all done very tastefully. It was all done very professionally. I'm I'm you know, even though I don't really want to hear Kendrick rapping soft, those songs that were like that, I really appreciate the production of them. Uh, the beats were awesome. You know what I'm saying? Every beat from song to song was really dope. And uh, that song was probably my second or third favorite song. Um, but I really dug the back and forth from the girl and him. Who was the name of the girl? So, yeah, I was looking her up today. Her name's Taylor Page. Taylor Page. And she's, this is her first rap song. I'm assuming Kendrick wrote her lyrics because she's known as an actor mostly um yeah i could hear um but you know where she's from where's she from from inglewood ah because i when i heard her voice i was like this sounds like yo i thought maybe it was yo-yo but yo-yo yeah she did sound a little bit like yo-yo didn't she yeah it was it was good though um i'm not i don't know if he wrote her stuff but i really thought the song was good i thought the song was excellent relationship raps have been done before usually sounding soft and corny yeah this one is the opposite of that this one cuts so deep from both sides too and you you know like you were talking about like songs for the ladies and songs for the dudes like this is like 
this is a hard song. I don't know if it's for the ladies or anyone. It's but for both. Both sides really represent to the fullest. I know? think she represented the women correctly. I think he represented the men correctly. And I think the end result of the song, the end of the song is what happens. <laughs> I'm not even going to tell you what. Or you want to bring it up? You want us to bring it up? What? I mean, they sat there and battled and f- fussed and fought and talked real crap about each other and then at the end of it they went and fucked <laughs> you know what i mean hey listen i'm gonna i'm gonna say something towards that right then we can move on to another song it's like or, or whatever you want to do but too often i think that we have normal size or, or made normal you know negative conversations uh arguing fussing fighting allowing ourselves to be energized by negative energy, right? Um, Allowing negativity to release those endorphins in our heads that we all love, (laughs) you know? Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, too often, I think, I don't want to say it, but I think women, uh, when they get horny, seem to sometimes fuss and fight us to get us to have sex with them i'm sorry and i think there was some tone of that in the song am i right or wrong and i think we need to understand that there's endorphins in the god side of it you know we don't have to be dark on the dark side of the of the of it to uh enjoy it uh i enjoy family now I enjoy barbecues. I enjoy, you know, uh, doing my music. I enjoy good meals with the family. You know, there's, I like laser tag and, you know, I I love uh, uh, jet skiing. You know what I mean? Uh, These are the things that I've decided to get my endorphins from and not the negative. So let's be careful for that. And I think that was part of, this song that that was an underlying current of that in the song all right i can buy that so um this is a this is some real weird rap this is uh felimun kasi i believe is how you pronounce the artist's name album title ama gogela a group from durban south africa i think i've talked about them on the podcast before actually but they just came out with this new album and i haven't had a chance to listen to it much but uh I'm going to play a track for volume 10 and see what he thinks. What you think about that? I got a couple questions. All right. Where are they from? South Africa. South Africa. And I will say that I feel like if I knew what they were saying, I would like it. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, yeah, that's always the thing with a foreign language. It's like right. You might hate it if you knew what they were saying, too. <laughs> well, I guess that might be that might be also correct, right? <laughs> yeah. Um. In general, I don't really like songs that I can't understand what they're saying. Uh, but if I was to take that away, I think it's a cool little song. You know what I mean? Um, on some on some African tip stuff, what is dope about it, really dope, is that, you know, Africans have embraced hip hop. and But I'm very happy about it. Um Maybe also I'm thinking that they've been missing, you know what I mean? Like, man, I think maybe the Africans have been missing, you know, that's what I'm thinking, you know, in hip hop, um, the Jamaicans got a hold of it, you know what I'm saying? But anyway, um, you know, Africans, welcome to hip hop. <laughs> um, 
I'm, I'm very encouraged by this song, and I look forward to hearing more hip-hop from you guys. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I, I say I'm the opposite of you as far as, like, not understanding what people are saying, because I've... I'm generally so picky about lyrics, like there's going to be something that turns me off a little bit, but when I don't know what they're saying at all, it I'm free to just enjoy you. the uh, sonics of it. Well. But uh, you're not alone. I think most people are like you. They want to understand what the hell they're listening to. But like you said, if I, if now, since you said that, if I was just to listen to the sonics of it, I would say, yeah, I think good that. To go. This would be a really fun group to go see live. That might be true. Yeah. Very, very true. All right. Last track. You told me a couple of days ago that you were not familiar with Dose One. And I've been kind of like surveying 10 recently. Like, what do you think about this guy? What do you think about this guy? Um, and then he said he had never heard Dose One. So I thought I'll play a play a track from his group themselves from the album crowns down the song is called back to burn let's do it uh correction in post-production i realized this track is the back to burn remix from the crowns down and company album I just wanted to say before you call him a biter, um, Dose One is quick to cite his influences, and he he does list Project Blood basically first. So <laughs> good life, etc. I wasn't gonna call him a biter, <laughs> but I was definitely gonna ask that question. Um, I think I like him a lot more than I like the song. I can definitely hear his skills and I love his flow and I love the way come on wait till oh wait sorry I'm talking to you. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even notice I was doing that <laughs> my bad uh, I like the way it seems like he mixed the hip hop with the rock and uh, I can appreciate that man I didn't really think when he started to do it, I didn't really think it was working until halfway through the song. And I was like, oh, this shit is working. You know what I mean? So, yeah, as far as him as an MC, I, I appreciate uh, his skills. Um, I, I definitely think he's a thought he was a student. Yeah, I think he's one of the one of the greats. You think he's one of the greats? Yeah. Wow. He's one of my favorites. I would definitely have to hear some more stuff before yeah. I say that. I've, this is the only song that I've ever heard of him. I noticed, too, in this track when we were listening, he had the di the distortion on his voice, too, that you didn't necessarily like in the other Yeah, track. it was a little bit too much for, on your track, but yeah. it, it, okay. it it was better here. It didn't, right. it, didn't, it didn't work. It didn't mess with the sonic sound of okay. the beat as much as yours did. I well, still, fine. I still liked your song, though, man. Don't hate. <laughs> All right. You know what I mean? But uh, yeah, I would be interested, and I and you know, not that I totally trust your opinion, but I respect it. You know what I'm saying? So I'd be very interested to hear some more since you think he's one of the greats. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get that from that song. I'll, I'll have to play his like. Uh, he's got a couple different battles with peace, but um, I didn't get that from that song. Yeah, but. When you talk about the greats, it's not about a song. It's about a, a person's whole yeah. work. You right. know what I mean? So I would have to hear more songs sure. before I said that. But, you know, I like I, I like him a lot. Cool. All right. Well, thanks for joining us, Volume 10. Hey, man. Anytime. Uh, you know, and uh, if you guys didn't know, uh, The Mole and I have an album coming out. It's called, uh, you don't mind me plugging the album, do you? Go for it. It's called Volume 10, 
introduces Dean Hawkins. Volume 10 as Dean yeah, Hawkins. Yeah, volume 10 as Dean Hawkins. That's what it is. Thank you for correcting me. <laughs> Hope you guys enjoy it. For even more of Volume 10, check out this month's bonus episode for an exclusive Exclusive. behind-the-scenes tale of drama and debauchery featuring two other very famous rappers. Volume 10 tells a story that is wild and hilarious, which you can find at patreon.com slash weird rap. Yeah. It's the weird rap horoscopes of Cool Keith. Check your horoscope. Aries, avoid the color blue. Taurus, crochet a beach towel. Geminis, eat your hair. Cancers, put three pennies under your pillow and make a whoosh. Leos, microwave a pack of crayons. Virgos. Your spirit animal is the sea cucumber. Libras, get a perm. Scorpios, look in the mirror and have a staring contest. Sagittarius, adopt the snake. Capricorns, walk straight four miles and then take a left. Aquarius, eat a raw egg. Pisces, impersonate a secret service agent. I'm interrupting your regularly scheduled listening of the Weird Rap Podcast to talk about my podcast. Hey there, I'm Zilla Rocca, one third of the Koa Culture Podcast, alongside Alaska of Hangar 18 and Duff Jokes fame and Adam's fam, and Curly Castro of Backwood Studios and Shrapnel fame, and me, the least famous guy on the show, to talk to you about our pod, Call Out Culture, dropping every week on all the platforms you enjoy your podcast. We talk Duff Jokes, Raucous, Cannibal. Ox, why Nas is the worst rapper talking about women, TV shows, movies, art, culture, the fun things with guests you admire and enjoy from the indie rap landscape. We are out here, so stop listening to this podcast, which we do enjoy. Listen to ours instead. Call out culture. Find us anywhere you enjoy podcasts. Thank you. Do you make weird rap music or podcasts and you would like to have an advertisement on this podcast? I'm selling them for the bargain rate of just 75 bucks right now. The price will go up, but you could contact me, work out a deal at weirdrap3000 at gmail.com. For our feature presentation, I am very excited to bring you Veteran weirdo from Sacramento, California. First degree, the DE. A true guest of honor. I've been uh, I've been listening to your music since 2003. With the big black bat <laughs> really caught my ear. <laughs> yeah, man, and I've been following it ever since. And I think you just keep getting better and more interesting. So, Actually, let's start at the beginning, though. Can you talk about? Where you were born and raised, what your upbringing was like, parents, experiences in school, any formative uh, childhood experiences, stuff like that. Um, well, I was born in Memphis, Tennessee, but moved to Sac when we were when I was two. And my parents are solid, a great foundation. Uh, started music in middle school, really at the end of elementary school. At first, I was called the pro. And then I had a friend, Ace Mac, give me the name first degree, the D, and it just stuck. And I was in bands and choir, played the clarinet. And what does the DE stand for? Sorry, I got it. I've always wanted to know. <laughs> the D E G R double E. Oh, I so see. I, I think see. There'd be more first degrees. So I just added, I used to call myself the D E G R double E. Right, 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 right. It was nothing additional. All right. Got it. So yeah, there's was marching bands and just got into music, got, got this thing going. Here we are, 30 years later. Did you fit in as a kid or were you like a weirdo back then? Were you a misfit or were you normal? A little of both. I was like class president and I was always leaders of situations, but I was definitely trying to get outside the box and trying to solve problems outside the box. Cool. 
so take us through your rap career. Like, you know, how did you get started with it? I think I found your earliest release that I found, at least, was You Can't Handle the Format, 1992. Mm. You're 18 years old, right? Mm-hmm. That was the first studio release. Okay. Steady jockin' the D E G R D O E. The illegal lyric wrath is now gone further. Get on your knees, beg, please, that I spear my murder. Murder in the first Yo, degree. School, 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 yeah. In the lab, we had the Rat Pack, and that was the homies from high school. So that was like the first recordings. But that was the first release, and I got with Death Trap, BG, Young Joker, uh, Funk Beta. We created Death Trap. Southbound was my first release. Went independent with it, gave birth to Planet Zero. With, at the same time Planet Zero started, we got the whole Fahrenheit record started, made it official, independent, got distribution, ownership. Here we are. So I feel like when Southbound came out, you know, you were very much more traditional than you became. Your style was from the lyrics to the music, the sonic quality to your vocal delivery, didn't stand out as much as you did later. And by I feel like by the big black bat, you know, I feel like you fully came into your own skin. South Sacramento, where I steps with boots, rep with troops, making my pops back the Fairfield, the Valley Joe. I smoke two pounds in the Berkeley town. The Big D O conquered in Frisco, the Shark Tank and Lorenzo, where the bang make rounds. They know the egg in LA, they say, What's life like as a DEG trip that fair night bang? Just gonna get on snakes and come deal with it. I'm telling you, it's feeling like I'm watching my life. Watching go. my life. Go. Watching my life. So can you talk about the sort of progression and how was also the audience reaction, the reaction of your peers as you kind of grew into this more unique style of rapper? I'm going to start with that last part of that question. It's a great question because they always want you to go backwards and do what you already did. So it's like I've been in the game so long that it's been different generations that want me to go back to different time periods. So it's like, at first, for example, when Planet Zero got going, they wanted me to go back to Southbound. And then, mm. damn that D, wanted me to go back to Planet Zero. So when you came along a, a big black bat, I had already been through the cycle. Yeah. And so it was like, they, when Big Black Bat came out, they had wanted me to go back to like, damn that D in that era. So it's like, it kind of leads to the beginning of your question, which is, it's just a cycle and it's just growing. You're just putting out what you, you just, I put out music for myself, what I want to hear, just yeah. while I'm washing dishes, you know? So it's like, <laughs> so, so I'm just making the music and I just release it. But, you know, I grow as a person. I change as a person. You know, like I haven't said any bad words in my albums for like 15 years, but at first, you know, I did. So it's like, you know, you just get young and fitting in. And when your whole life is on the internet, practically, you know, you just see the whole stages of someone's life you know so the music is always just whatever's honest in that time period yeah i agree with you where i like the older de raps more than the younger ones but i hear like that mm, the hunger in the younger ones mm-hmm. but i hear the wisdom and the purpose in the older ones so it's just i guess it's whatever is clever and whatever period you are in your own life you know and you can just like hop in and just be guided by this 50 album you know calendar of just music and just guide you through yeah well i mean the big black bat will always have like a nostalgic place in my heart because that's where i you know found it when i was young and then but i think your newest album is probably my favorite honestly i think you're getting better like i mean that's just my taste i guess but yeah, I really applaud you for continuing to grow and develop as an MC. Thank you, Mo. This new one is my favorite too, man. Need direction to build your hive. Here comes the deep rap. Get you off the schnai. And you know that's true. Rooted in the summer, build that little side crew. <laughs> and you know that's right. Killers in the world banged up for Fahrenheit. We march into the front, shoot it with Fahrenheit. Street legend, you thought you was one. Not today's... I had this little style that I used to only use like a little bit in every song, kind of like a spice, 
But on mm. this album, I was just like, I'm going to use that style the whole album. And it's kind of just like a flowing with the beat kind of, I just used it the whole album. Mm. Uh, uh, I was just coming out of dealing with drama. I just put it all on. I was retired, came out of retirement for the people. The people need motivation. People need a leader. And the music is just so much easier to make beats now. It's ridiculous. So the music, I could, you know, it's easier for me to go from here to here. So I agree. I like this new one too. I appreciate that. Speaking of the production, you know, you've been self-produced for the most part uh, since the early days. Oh, since the beginning, since you can't handle the format in 1992. Yeah. So you're saying it's easier to produce now. Is that because of the equipment or obviously you have more experience as well, but... But the equipment too. I'm curious about the the equipment you started on and how it's progressed over the years. Oh my goodness. I started on a, a AR something something and I have a it had an MPC two thousand, but I ended up signing that and selling it to a fan because they wanted it. But now it's just these computers, it's just ridiculous. And some of these songs on the back on uh, um, on Backman I made on the phone, man. Some of the oh, beats. Wow. That's just ridiculous. What applications are you using um, on the on the computer as well? Like, what what programs do you use mostly now? Uh, Pro Tools, GarageBand. Sometimes uh, we play music. Just a variety of different whatever we can get our hands on. I had a. Uh, sometimes I'll use. I have a, some Rollins, but really it's just the computers now and whatever I can get my hand on a computer. Sometimes we make sounds. So it's just about being creative and taking what you have. I don't have the big whoopty whoop and the whoopty nam. You know, I've never been, you know, I've been with poor man Dre and he had a big studio, but here we're at Fahrenheit Studios now. And, you know, I just do what I got, but make the most of it, you know, and just try to give the people inspiration with the little I have. And it's more just about the spirit of, and the purpose of what, you know, what you're making. Yeah. So, um, Obviously, you're a unique artist, but I think all artists have their inspirations and their influences. Um, so I'm wondering, who, who would you list as an influence, basically? Professor X of the X-Clan, Rakim. There's a few. Um, mm, I wish I would have had thought about that one. But. So if I was going to guess, I was, I was wondering if E-40 would have been an influence. Yeah, Um and I've been, th- I heard your last podcast. I love your podcasts. And you mentioned I sound like E40. I've been thinking about that all week. Oh. And I don't, I, I can hear them. Maybe there's a little in there, but you know, they, they got, the, the Sacramento is like a hub, right? And the Bay, they got the thing, but they feed off us. And mm. LA and them, they definitely feed off us. I'm going to give you an example. As far as inspirations, I'd have to really think about that. But as far as current rappers, I like Briss and Draco, the ruler. Uh-huh. And I hear Briss and Draco. It's like I hear Sacramento all over, you know, and it's, I hear now that Briss has passed, I hear him all over. So, you know, yeah. I got some E40, but E40 got some DE. Right, right. Well, no, I'm sorry. I, I know no artist likes to hear that they sound like someone else, but, you know, I think it's really in- interesting to try to track the influences. And this fucking guy over here claims that every almost everyone's style came from him. We had a big conversation about that last night. He says he stole their style too, but whatever. But really, um, it's just, you know, being who you are. Yeah. Like all those DEisms, and it's just, you know, that's how I talk to myself in my head, and it's just... It's who I am. Keep it simple. Just be who you are. So I already asked you, you know, if you felt like a misfit growing up. And, you know, it's part of the whole weird rap identity. I really identify with the misfit and the the weirdo that doesn't fit in. So I may be projecting this onto you a little bit, but (laughs) I feel like I heard this, you know, like, you know, especially in... The first album I heard from you, uh, Big Black Bat, you had the I Am Not Welcome Here song, <laughs> you know.
And then I was, you know, going back through your discography, it seemed like the intro to uh, Damn That DE, you're talking about not being accepted or people like somehow, you know, not vibing with your style because you're different. Like just compared to the Sacramento scene, from my view, like you stick out in a wonderful way. You're much more interesting and unique. So I just am curious, you know, how you felt, how the response was from all these much more conservative artists and audiences that are used to more normal music. I'll never be mainstream or, you know, I don't shoot for that. I had the homie Bueno come through to the lab and it was our first time meeting. And he was talking about, it seems like I always just do the kind of music that I want to do. I guess it's just like that simple, you know? Yeah. And I, you know, I hear what you're talking about with the other music, you know, and what's conservative and what's common. I ain't got time for all that, man. I just, <laughs> you know, just, just got to do, you know, I know what my role in the game, you know, and if I was doing that, then how are they going to get their DE, you know? So I just have my role. I got to, you know, I got to try to uplift people. So that's, that's cutting out most of the common rap right there. You know, I got to right. uplift people and I got to be creative. I can't cuss, you know, so I just got to put it all out there. It's just the way I see it, the way I would want to hear the music, you know. So I think that's what it is. It's how I would want to hear it. Like, I'm my harshest critic. So I'm really kind of right. like, like this whole Backman album, I'm mostly like rapping to myself, bringing myself back up and just getting back in the game. I got some really, really, really purposeful missions ahead, actually. I just started a business, okay, Colin and Speedy through LLC, and it's solving two of America's problems, okay? One, people can't find a place to live, right? Can't buy a house. Because prices are going up, and it's like it's competitive, and it's ridiculous. And two, inflation is going up, you know, and so it's like people's money, people are leave, losing money in the bank. So my business is focusing on helping people invest, and we're building tiny homes. It's like we're trying to restructure the Sacramento landscape. So we bought our first lot, and we're starting to build our first homes. You know, instead of these giant homes that are being built for rich people. You know, we're building small homes and people are going to be able to rent them and be able to rent to own them. So it's going to be like yeah. unique. You can bypass the banks and all that. That's awesome. So we're just trying to restructure Sacramento's landscape. So it's like, I got to build myself up for that. So that brought me out of retirement too, just to, while I'm washing those dishes and trying to make these deals, you know, I just got a soundtrack, you know? So that's like my purpose right now. That's great. Yeah, I was definitely going to bring up all your like community organizing stuff. And yeah, this housing people, of course, is like one of the most important things I think you can do right now. And that kind of relates to what I was going to bring up is this, this NMLS test prep song, right? <laughs> <laughs> so tell people what this is, because this is, this is fucking unique and great. <laughs> well, again, in order to be... I'm, I'm, about, I'm right on the cusp, about three weeks away, of getting my real estate and mortgage loan license, okay, California real estate license. So oh, in order to do that, the first step is to pass the nationwide MNLS test. And you have to learn a jillion laws. And, and it was like, I really wanted to learn it because I really know what's going on with housing. And I know people need help and they need somebody they trust on the inside. So it's like people were my motivation, but it's just like learning that stuff was just hard. So I just went back to the basics on that MNLS and just took all my notes, studied for like three months, took all my notes, like learned all them. I didn't learn all the laws, but just like wrote them down and kind of just summarized them, had a notebook and just turned it into a song, one lyric at a time. So that's not that, again, yeah. that song was made for me when I go on my little walks, you know, so I could learn that. And it worked because I passed the test and I actually just recently passed the California real estate test. But that one was the hard one. And I don't think if I wouldn't have made that song, I would have passed that test. 
So then, you know, I, I shared it actually, and then people were just like tripping off of it and yeah. never heard anything like it. So I just released it just to help people. It's great. For for the listener who's not aware, it's a 12-minute long song, which has basically, if you were to memorize this entire song, you would have all the answers to pass the test to become a real estate agent, right? Right. That's exactly what it is. If you memorize that song, I guarantee you, you pass that test. But you have to memorize the song because there's things in it that's like subconscious. <laughs> It's not just like, this law is here. It's like little subconscious clues that'll trigger you. So it's kind of intricate. But if you, you're right. If you memorize that song, you'll pass that test. Mortgage Law Books. Mortgage Law Books. Civil Rights, 1866. The Unfair Housing Act, CCPA 68, got in the mix. That's Consumer Credit Protection Act. Bad ads, loan costs and all of that. All right, and there's other community organizing stuff we're going to get into also, but I want to go back to what we were talking about previously, and it relates to, you know, being a businessman as well. Like, when you make the decision in your music to, instead of, you know, go with the times and give people what they want, you know what they want, kind of, and go further from that, the businessman in you is making a decision, right? So, like, was this a conscious decision to be like, I know I'll probably make more money if I do this, but I'm going to go this other direction? That is a very, very, very good question because there is a battle. I even mentioned this in the back of man. There's a battle between First Degree, the DE, and Michael Colin, the business owner of Fahrenheit Records. Michael Colin, just like you said, he sees what the, what's going on, with, especially like with licensing and and all what they want to hear and the common music and common music is what the TV licensing wants and the commercials. And so Michael Cole is always trying to get in first degree of the DE's ears, but first degree of the DE is like, you know, I'm the one that made this, you know, you're the one who's along for the ride. You can't catch up to me yet. So why are you trying to tell me what to do? So really first degree, the DE holds the bag. And he does whatever he wants to do because he's the one who created this. Michael Cole the businessman still has not caught up to him. So when Michael Cole the businessman catches up to first degree the D, then Michael Cole the businessman could have some input about what the first degree the D is doing. But until that point arises, <laughs> the businessman has to just listen to everything first degree the D is saying because he's the one steering the ship. You know, maybe one day if, you know, like, for example, first uh, Fahrenheit Records got a new deal with, we have a deal with Amazon, uh, Amazon Prime with movies. We're going to put out two movies, including a Batman movie, who I'm looking forward to. And we have publishing with them, Amazon, and we have a new licensing deal for, like, commercials. And, like, I just mentioned, like, you know, like, get your music in, like, commercials and TV shows. And I've, like, been learning what they want. So maybe one day, <laughs> like right now, they want an urban Christmas song. Well, this is kind of a tangent, but so Michael Cohen, the businessman, is like, first degree, can you give me an urban Christmas song? These businesses are screaming for them, for their commercials. And, and first degree is just, you know, it's just like, mm. so it is a battle. That's a very good question. It's just, it's constant. But I know one thing. My, me as a business owner has to catch up with, you know, because First Degree is known all around the world, but Fahrenheit Records is not, you know? So that's a good question. Michael Cole and the businessman has some work to do. Right. Well, as a, as a listener, I appreciate that the business hasn't taken precedence <laughs> over the art. But uh, yeah. We'll keep him in a box. <laughs> but, you know, speaking of, Work like you, you seem to be kind of a workaholic. You've always got you're juggling a few different things at a time. You made multiple f short films, f full length films, written books. Um, you've been a math teacher, you got a master's degree, right? In global teaching strategies. So, like, you're a workaholic, right? Oh, I wish, man. <laughs> I wish, really. I wish. I wish, I wish, I wish, man. I wish I was a workaholic. But, you know, I do a lot of things and I like to do a lot of things. And 
but if, you're, but if I was a workaholic and did a little more and it goes back to what we were just talking about, you know, just, just got to keep pushing myself and got to keep working harder. But yeah, I like to do a lot of things. I like to educate myself and learn how to do different things. I think all those things you're talking about, music and teaching and all the, everything has come to this real estate though. Hmm. I, it all comes down to helping families move in these homes, you know, and yeah, helping it's... people invest in real estate. I think every, even the music, first degree, everything has come to this because, you know, there's a divide with the have and the have nots and it's getting yeah. steeper and steeper than ever, you know. Yeah, I applaud that for sure, man, because we can, we can hope that art and music makes the world a better place, but it's just a hope. You never know. You know you're doing something that's really hands-on now, definitely putting roofs over people's heads. Can I just say something about that? Yeah. As a musician, I'm your escape, you know? I mean, people could love music, but really it's just like, it can be a motivational tool, but it's like an escape. Yeah. But once I started helping families, like with, you know, in real life and helping fans, like I started reaching out to fans and seeing who wanted to, you know, see about fixing their credit and being able to get a mortgage. And that was purposeful. Then I was really in their life, you know, so that was like another level. And it's like, I love being people's rap star and all their uh, underground hero, but it's just escape. I want to be like something where their families would be like, man, good thing we ran in the D because now our generations are better because he did this, this like solid things, you know? Yeah. You know, and speaking of helping people, you've also kind of shifted in your music from being in the beginning, seemed like very much just focused on you know, violence and misogyny, typical rapper shit. That loud laugh for that buckshot caper, but now you ain't on the buck with me. Starts when I cut with me. Oh, do it thou dark as I did. Dark swear, believe the stress of me couldn't end. Gradually, more and more, like, consciousness seemed to get into the, your, your lyrics. You know, Link in the Chain, I think, on your third album seemed to be where you started thinking about you know the community more and like the influence that you may have on on people listening and then you know it, it seemed to make its way more into the music as you got older which is just a natural thing that happens as people get older I guess but uh can you talk about a little bit that that progression um well even back in the day you know like with too short remember you used to have like the dirty side and the clean side you mm -hmm. know so even like Link in the Chain, even the beginning, it's like, you got to balance it out at least, you know? If you come in with this, you got to come with that to balance it out. So yeah, those songs are always important. Every album, you got to have some kind of inspirational, not like, you know, like real inspirational, positive music that's going to uplift people. You can, and you can do the, you know, like I mentioned, the bris and, like, I love gangster rap, but, you know, you'll hear, you can hear the purpose underneath, you know? So it's like, I like purposeful gangster rap. But yes, yeah. to me, it's important to just throw a, not a gangster rap covered positive song, just a positive song. And speaking of that and gangsters, um, talk about the Bloods and Crips gang piece album and what surrounded that. So the idea came from here in SAC, there was like this gang war. It was like Asian gangs are fighting and black gangs are fighting and black gangs are fighting Asian gangs. So it was around the time the Bloods and Crips album from LA came out and I was like, well, they're doing it down there. Maybe we can bring some peace. So I started just, I lived right on the corner of Valley High, which is like smack down up in the hood out here, uh, South Sacramento. Started inviting folks to my house, you know, leaders of this side, members of that side. And we had some drinks and just talked and started just turning on the beats, DE -E beats, you know, and just making some music. It was all cool. And it ended up being, I, I, if I would have known what it was going to become, I would have like recorded it like 
in a professional studio and like pulled out of, but at first it was just in my house, you know, we were just recording in my house. But then we recorded it and I didn't even release it at first, but then the news found out. So then we got on the news about, we had a rally and it was in the newspaper and I released the album and it was all good. It was, you know, it was a good buy. We had a, it was a six month gang truce. To my understanding, it was effective. You know, I don't know everything that goes on in Sacramento, but there was not, nothing in the news anymore. And that kind of launched me as being like, community activists here in Sacramento. That's awesome. Now, jumping back into the uh, escapism and the whole creative side, you've created this universe, it feels like, with your alter egos, you know, all these characters. We got Robo DE, Black Bane, Schlumpulicious, Super Black. I haven't followed the stories completely enough to know if, if all these characters actually know each other and interact, but give us a rundown of the different characters and maybe how they relate to each other. I suppose it's just different roles in my head where, you know, Blackie Lem is like the aggressive risk taker. The D is like the cool, like, play the back, cool accountant. And Schlumpylicious is, he, he's the agitator. So it's, I guess it's just like different roles in my head. Yeah. Black Bane is needed. Super Black, my friend came up with that. Just that just whatever the times need at the times, you know? I don't, I don't sit and come up with them. They just, the spirit comes over me, you know? And it's just... That's who the universe needs right now. So like the Batman, which is a combination of me being back and the Batman movie, which I give a B plus or a B. <laughs> it was cool. It was cool. It wasn't, he should have kept Christopher Nolan's name out of his mouth. Though. It was cool. <laughs> but the Batman's purpose is just to remind people how it's supposed, you know, with, without the auto tunes and the whippy whams and the nippy knots just raps. Nowadays, all the songs are real short because that's how you make money because it's like you have to listen to them over and over and it's like streaming and you got get paid off hits. and the, Yeah. So it's like I'm doing the opposite of what everyone, the songs are longer than I've ever made and more raps than ever. It's just because when I'm washing dishes, I don't want to have to take off my gloves and like do something. I just want something to listen to like constant and like that I want to listen to that's like lyrical and musical. So it's just, you know, it's all about that. Yeah, I love it. I say Thank keep, you. I'm glad. Keep doing what your heart tells you. Fuck what the what the, what everyone else is doing. Um so your book we mentioned, you wrote a book about the history of Sacramento rap and um I think a lot of people outside of Sacramento, even including myself, I only live an hour and a half away, but um I don't even know much about it. Obviously, you wrote a whole book about it, so there's a lot to say, but you know, quickly who would you say are some of the most important figures in Sacramento rap music and why? Oh, DC Ray and the Triple Threat Three, of Sacramento's first rap group. But as far as knowing, I say you were an hour and a half away. Yeah. When I went into this journey, I thought I knew, you know, and I went all the way to the back. But I ended up, if I were to read it now with what I knew then, I would know about 20% of it. So about 80% of the, like the movie yeah. and the book was new to me. Not, well, the book goes current. The movie is like the first 25% of the book. So that first core history, no, I didn't know that either. So it was a lot of fun to learn all that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, the Triple Threat 3. They're our first group. Yeah, I'm gonna cut in a I'm gonna cut in a sample of them right here because I just l listened to them for the first time yesterday. Is 
they were pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> and that was that song was Dr. Dre's first song. Really? He scratched on. Yes. No shit. It was like when he was young, they brought him to the studio. They had gone to LA. They brought this new DJ to the studio. And it's just uh, so this is like way in the beginning. Yeah. Like way, way. But so the, if all that didn't happen, who knows if the rest didn't trickle, you know? So that was very important yeah. that they did that. So I made that book, wrote the book, and made the movie just so people know. You know, so if we, because if we don't write our own history, somebody else is going to write it and they're going to mess it up real bad. Yeah, I mean, and I know a little bit about various other Sacramento rappers, um, but one in particular I thought we could maybe talk about because you kind of came up with him. You guys used to work together a lot. Um, Brother Lynch hung, right? So just, you know, a lot of people don't even know about him, but talk about him and how the two of you sort of worked together and possibly influenced each other. I mean, there's definitely a little bit of an overlap, especially when you were in like, the big black batter, like the horror themes, you know, talk about that and the, and how you related to horror. And Well, it all started with Funk Beta. As, as I mentioned, Funk Beta was part of Death Trap, but he was friends with Lynch. Okay. So he's the one, he's the core of that, that's, that sound you're talking about. He's the core of all that. And so mm. we kind of came up and kind of surrounded ourselves with him, which is kind of, you know, we all used to make music together. Mm, made some hits but that sound though the sound i would give credit to beta for that sound he's he's the greatest rap producer of all time and so he's like the one producer who just go in and just do everything himself i did everything myself on this one to challenge myself but as far as like he could do any genre like jazz or so so funk beta i need to research him i guess did he produce Brother Lynch Hung's stuff? Yeah. Okay. All the best ones. Your mama won't like my shit, nigga. Admit, if you were sitting up in your room high, loaded up in your tape deck, ready to write your tape next. Me, I do hot sex, raise a blazing alcohol, sports a nigga ceremonial rips next. Then I write my shit next. So feel your insides and intestines when you mix me with the whiskey. Tell them situation risky with a nail gun through your eye, you will. Up until Backman, he produced at least a couple songs on every single one of my albums. And, you know, you're saying that there is basically a sound of Sacramento in a way yeah. that stems from him. So how would you characterize that sound even, you know, from... Obviously, it's changed over the years, but what could you say about the character of the Sacramento sound? Well, I learned if, you know, to common folk, like... Not to the public, I'd say, we all know this sound, right? It's like this sickness sound. But it wasn't until I wrote the book and was researching for it that Sacramento had like dan a dance, like pop sound before that. So mm. I learned about that era, but it wasn't. And there are a few other eras of like gritty sample area, but that sickness sound came from him and just making those beats. And like, it seems like it's very much like, uh, drum machine, like the drums are mostly from like drum machines as opposed to samples. It's dark and like a gritty, like kind of funk. A lot more synthesizers than samples in general, right? Yeah, I would say that too. And it's yeah. a lot, maybe simpler beats and just like a funkier, grittier sound. Yeah. Less polished and more groove and hard and nasty, you know, just honest. And it seems like hard. it it spilled over into the Bay Area to some degree. Like, you could maybe hear that same thing in, like, RBL Posse a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. I'm, they've been feeding off Sacramento for decades. <laughs> That's the truth. You referenced in your recent track, oh, The Re Revenge of Robo DE, the Sacktown Leech. So we're talking about Sacramento characters. Who is, who is the Sacktown Leech? All I'm going to do is to speak on the whole, that's talking about Lynch. All I'm going to do is oh. to speak on that is he needs to holler at me, okay? Because it's like he's got offended about the movie, wanted it to be about him, but the oh. movie's about way before all that. So that's all I'm going to say on that. All right, yeah. I didn't mean to get into any drama. Oh, yeah, but... that's all right. I do want to put that out there, though. That movie is about 
the beginning, like when we was kids, you know, we was kids when all that was going on. So. so yeah, this is the movie. I actually just found it yesterday. I bookmarked it. It's on your YouTube, right? This is the two hour long history of Sacramento documentary. Yes, you got to watch that. It was on Amazon Prime for a couple of years. They just took it off because licensing issues and all the stuff I got to deal with. But I don't have to deal with the back man, though. But um, you got to watch it. Yeah, Ice T is in it. Sibo is in it. Curtis Blow is in it. Yeah, I'm excited to check that out. I wrote the book first, and the book was like a decade. But the movie, I wanted to focus on just those first few years of when it. For like the very beginning. So you have to watch the movie. The movie goes way more in depth than the book because I'm taking the book in sections. So yeah. that two that's two hours of just a fourth of the book. I interviewed like DC Ray, the Triple Threat Three, all those people. I just interviewed a bunch of people. Me and Emo put that together. So that's like one of my pride and joy is that movie. And now, like you mentioned, since Amazon Prime took it off, I went ahead and was like, the people need to see it. So I just put it on YouTube. Anyone could see it. History of Sacramento rap movie. So, man, um, I want to make sure I asked you everything. While you're thinking about that, I want to, I've listened to a few podcasts and I want to thank you for doing what you're doing. You know, um, like you said earlier in this interview, the rap that's not made for the masses like mine doesn't get as much attention, you know? And yeah. it's not, it just doesn't stick with the masses. It's not supposed to, it's above their head. So we need these outlets, you know, to tell them what, the, what they really should be listening to. Like there was uh, your last episode, one of them songs, it was a female Oh, yeah. Right, and the beat was changing. Do normal. I was like, damn, I'm home. So I really appreciate what you're doing. So keep it up, okay? Just keep it going. Thank you, man. And speaking of that, you know, bringing the music that wouldn't otherwise be heard to people, like, are there any other unique rap artists that might appeal to the weird rap audience um, that people probably don't know about or that more people should know about that you might want to recommend either from Sacramento or just anywhere? Well, just like I said before, uh, I, it's hard for me to get excited about rap. Like I make rap for myself and then, yeah, yeah. you know, I get excited on the D rap once it's completed. And all, but other than that, but recently, Briss and Draco the Ruler. Okay. I love those two. And it's like, I'm fortunate that Violence and murder is so in our business. Yeah. You know, both of them have been murdered, and it's just why is it so common in our business? You know? Yeah, it's a problem. Any final words you want to leave people with, man? Everybody keep listening to the Weird Rap podcast, man. It's purposeful and it's necessary. My name is First Degree to D. You can search for any of my albums starting from 92 to current. My newest album's called The Back Man. The first video is called Revenge of Robo D. It's back as slow gangster raps. You know, um, educate yourself, educate your mind, build your skills up. We're farming an investment team. We have the LLC. I have an office. I'm in my office every day. The purpose is to help people invest in real estate and build pro tiny home projects. You know, we're changing the landscape. Everybody wants these giant homes. It's time to just get smaller because these giant homes are for the rich people, but you got to get in the biz. Um, people, we mentioned the history of Sacramento rap movie is free on YouTube. Check that out. The book can get that on Amazon. And stay abreast on everything Fahrenheit. There's a Batman movie coming out on Amazon Prime. We're going to try to get that out in like December, but we'll see. Stay on that. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thank but, you. Uh, my website is firstdegreethede.com. We have links to all that on the site. And I'll link you in the show notes. Now, I really want to try to get you on the Weird Rap collaboration album I've been working on. Um, I'm a producer as well, and uh, I've been kind of trying to get verses from all my favorite artists, 
like two to four MCs on each song. I really love to try to get a first degree verse on a track. Um, so maybe we can make that happen. Any possibility? We'll work on. Yeah, yeah. we'll have to we'll talk about it. some kind of trade, or yeah. maybe a uh, a chorus or a verse. Or you make the beats. Is there a way I can hear your beats? Yeah, I'm gonna send you. I have a particular beat. I have a particular concept, and I actually want you to, if you have the time, research Volume Ten because he's actually the guy that I want you to do a track with. Um, just check out Volume Ten, Pistol Grip Pump. Um, he's you know doing shit since '94, but he's put out a bunch of shit since then. But that was like his big that. hit, Pistol Grip Pump. But um, anyway, like I think you two would actually make a great um, collab song. So. Anyway, check them out, and in the meantime, I'll uh, I'll be in touch with you, and we'll we'll try and figure right, it out. All right, thank you. Keep up a good work, and let me know when the next one is. Okay. Yeah. See you next time. Hey, yo. Oh wait, Volume Ten yo. wants to say something. What? Don't feel bad, bro. I never heard of you either. <laughs> so look, I'm gonna do my homework on you. Do your homework on me. Volume Ten. I got you, too. Yeah. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm check you out. If he think you dope, <laughs> I'm gonna check you out. All right. Later. All right, boss. Have a good one, man. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> you don't know who volume 10 is. <laughs> All right, you can spend a little more time with me and First Degree, the DE, in our bonus episode, also including volume 10's insane tale of rap intrigue. For just $3, you get that and all the past bonus episodes featuring... Even more Volume 10, Self Jupiter, Orco, Dose One, Billy Woods, Big Juss, and many more. Now, I want to take a moment to tell you all about the structure of weird rap. A lot of people think that weird rap is a team of people. They assume that we're well-funded and professional, but... The truth is, it's just me doing this. Uh, My friend Beverly Fresh has conducted a few interviews for me. He and Chief Doomsday sit in with me on the Weird Rap Discussion Gang episodes, but it's mostly just a one-person operation. I'm not telling you that because I want credit, but I'm telling you because I want you to understand that your support really matters. It means a lot. Uh, I can't survive off of this. I do other jobs to get by, and it's hard work creating, editing a podcast, doing all the graphics and the promotion, running an independent record label, writing all the little articles that I do, managing all the social media, and researching all the music that I share with you while trying to live a life and make ends meet. So I beg of you, I've asked before, let's try this angle, maybe you'll do it now. Please help me out, go to weirdrap.com slash rating. Weirdrap.com slash rating is where you can go to just spend a minute or less clicking around to help me fight the algorithms that are stacked against independent operations like Weird Rap. It would be very much appreciated if you would go there Leave a rating or review or something. And you can also support Weird Rap by buying Cool Keith and Weird Rap t-shirts or buying music. Links to that stuff and all the other Weird Rap things are right there as well at weirdrap.com slash rating. Okay, till next time. Be like First Degree the DE and follow your heart. Never mind what's trending. Be true to yourself, walk to your own beat, and make the world weirder. Weirder.